This is everything you need to know about an Ibex. I mean, I, I don't know what else. I, did we miss anything? Welcome, welcome to the RV Voice. The episode today is one of my favorite brands out there. If I were to buy an RV tomorrow for my lifestyle, this brand makes the most sense. Uh, 10 LHG, we'll get into what that is later, but it makes the most sense for my type of camping. But today I have with me a, a nice friend, a guest of mine that I met oh, what, about a year ago, probably. And yeah, uh, his name is Thomas Cunningham. He's with uh, Forest River Ibex, and I'll let him kind of go into his little background. And welcome, Thomas. Well, I'm glad to be on the show with you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, our background's pretty neat. You know, it spans across meeting out west all the way to Michigan uh, randomly, walking down the, the aisle, which is pretty neat to catch up there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a little bit about me. Um, I've been with the brand essentially since we somewhat launched right around, uh, you know, we've got a lot of inventory out there right around late 2020. Um, you know, and I've been our West Coast regional sales manager for the last handful of years, and I just have recently taken over uh, some of the product and sales manager roles uh, starting this year in about January timeframe. So there's a lot that goes into that. You know, it's not uh, that's a lot of nuts and bolts, but you know, the, the the most important thing is that you've been able to see and sell the product as it's evolved, as you know, the years change, customers' needs, demand, all that kind of stuff. Um, we've kind of gotten able to. Um, add to the product. So it's been pretty neat to be a part of that journey and see actually the product grow, some of the offerings grow and, you know, sizes and selling and different tow vehicles and everything that you can imagine, conversations, shows, you know, dealer trainings, everything that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis is pretty neat. So. Absolutely. So let's kind of get into it. Um, what I want to know and I want for the people to know is everything they would need to know to buy an Ibex. So yeah. he's he's the guy. He's the West Coast regional manager, man. He knows it all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know everything. I do like to pretend that I know something. So um, one of my favorite things, obviously, about the product is that um, we're we live and die, um, you know, right around that five thousand pounds and dry. You know that the the number for that is specifically is half ton towable, right? So mm -hmm. anytime we talk about our product. Um, the first thing that, you know, anytime I talk to a customer and try to qualify them and help them find the unit of their choice isn't about, you know, the color of the floor plan, the price, whatever. It's about what they are planning to tow that vehicle with, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, or tow that trailer with in their vehicle. Sorry if that made no mm -hmm. sense. But uh, essentially, you talk to customers, you know, at tons of shows, they come through, there's thousands of people that come through these shows. And some people come in and they know exactly what they want because they've done the research prior. That's kind of me as a customer, right? Um, I go to a, I go to a car lot. I look. I know exactly what I'm looking for. Um, just being an educated customer. And then sometimes there's customers that come to the shows to use the opportunity to see all the different units displayed all at once to figure out what they want. Maybe the tow vehicle they need to find out for what they want from the RV aspect. Um, so it's pretty neat to see that. But for the IBEX specific, you know, we're looking for that customer that's a half ton towable customer. Um, they can virtually tow almost all of our floor plans. Um, at an entry level half ton total, right? So that's the biggest thing. Um, or we smaller. Have, I said, go ahead. Or smaller, like pickup. Yeah, or smaller, or right? Smaller. So when I'm talking about that, I'm looking at our, our travel trailer lineup that's bigger, you know? So, mm -hmm. and I was just about to transition into that, is that, you know, our travel trailers <laughs> and the largest items that we have require half ton total, right? Um, everything down to our little horns, you can kind of get into that Jeep market, uh, forerunner market. It's it's right around that 3,000, 3,500 pounds dry, depending on how the unit's equipped, right? So we do have regular travel trailers that are, you know, 38, 3,700 pounds, single axle, small punk models and things like that. Um, but our Little Horn series really caters towards the true outdoor enthusiast, right? So that's one of the first things that we always pitch, and that's the entry level piece that we offer. It's got a lot of neat features on it. You know, it's got a rooftop tent, you know, bat wing awning. You got heated in, you got heated tank pads. You got uh, actual fresh water connection there. Uh, you get a bunch of roof rack mounted equipment. So that way you can store whatever you want, right? It doesn't have to be a kayak. It can be fishing rods, whatever you want. Mm. Um, the, mo the most important thing is that those RVT tracks are actually right there on the roofs for your, for your use in the Little Horn and Beast Mode models, right? Um, next thing we've got, obviously, is just a little bit of solar aspect on it. So the little horns come with solar on the side. Beast mode has standard solar packages on it. So it provides tons of flexibility of camping. So we see a lot of success on the product 
um, then and a lot of the customers I dealt with out west love to dry camp. So the 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 ability to have extra power while you're on the go from the solar aspect um, and some of the different ways that we wire compared to you know competition and things like that helps us you know take that camping journey and put it limitless, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you don't have to have, you know, you don't have to be plugged in. You don't have to do whatever. You can, you can virtually camp wherever you want, and that's that's the story. Is flexibility with our brand, right? Um, on the little Orange series, a lot of things that I like to push. There's, it's more of an upscale interior feel. So you're going to see, still going to come with a TV. It's going to have all the same lighting that we provide in our regular travel trailers. Uh, it still comes with a strong AC, so that way when you do sleep inside of it, small compact area, it stays cool. Um, we still do the power cord, you know, foldable quish, uh, cushions. Uh, we've it's got the JBLs. Thing, right? It's a little nugget type deal. The foldable cushion. Yeah. Yep. Hey, do you have, I, do you have this have... PowerPoint? Can you like sh share your screen? Uh, yeah. Let me see. What That'd be here. great. That way we kind of know what we're talking about when we're walking through here. Yeah. yeah so this go. is what I'm looking at. Can you see that? Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 That's yep. what I'm talking so about. So maybe yeah. we should have done that from the get go. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of going down the list here, just talking, talking on it. And, you know, like I was going to finish up with the, we've got the JBL flip five right here and still have all those USB pieces. So there's still that, uh, you know, camping feel, but you also get it a little bit better than maybe a tent per se, or, you know, entry level camping that yeah, way. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Um, you know, some of the outdoor accessories that we put on it still has the battery disconnect switch. We go through all of our fresh spray ports, freshwater spray ports. Um, give you a large outdoor hose. So if you need to spray things off, clean, you know, sand, whatever the case is, it gives you that. Uh, leash latches on uh, that unit as well. So pets, you can tether to the unit so that way they can kind of hang out outside with you. Mm -hmm. Unit like this, more than likely, they're going to be outside most, if not until they're sleeping. Um, travel trailers, you know, it's it, it gives you a little bit extra flexibility there. Um, always have a strong outdoor cooking mechanism so that we have two different versions, our 10LHRK and our 10LHG. Um, the 10 LHG will have a side kitchen that comes out through the uh, pasture storage. And then we also have 10 LHRK that does a rear kitchen, which is kind of what you see in this picture right here. So a little bit of different flexibility for two different styles, you know, maybe for your instance, I know we chatted about it already. Uh, you kind of need that the extra 10 LHG for, you know, hauling maybe like a dirt bike or something smaller. Mm -hmm. That's beneficial. Mm -hmm. Customers that just want this small little unit to take it wherever they want, 10 LHRK might be for them, you know? Mm -hmm. God, they're super cool. Yeah, that LSG. And you talk about the running gear, you're going to get to that. But, like, this thing is yep. meant to get away from people. And that's, like, when I like to camp. I don't even like to camp at campsites near people. I want to be, like, hiked into the mountains away from people. For sure. So, yes. the running gear, I mean, these things are built for rugged terrain. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we launched this um, as a running chain with the Kurt suspension in 2023 mm -hmm. for model years, I should say right around september october production dates um we had what we launched as our curt independent suspension so you know you'll be able to tell specifically on units out there with the with the suspension it's night and day difference from regular you know axles that people are used to seeing what it does is it it, it, it provides an independent truly independent suspension so each you know touching point or running gear or however you want to label it um, with wheels and tires on the ground it gives it a true independent um, arm that oscillates so that way if you go over bumps potholes terrain whatever the case is it's truly moving with what the wheel is encountering versus the whole trailer right so that will help extend the life of the coach if you're going from point a to point b on the road or it gives you a little bit better focus on the suspension while you are, you know, off off the pavement, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of the story that I pitch it as. And we focus on that with, you know, our tire pressure monitor system and those kind of things um, in our beast mode model. So, and that's kind of why I'm specific when I say beast mode, because as we go down here, you can kind of see the floor plans that I was talking about. This 10 LHRK has the rear um, kitchen and then we also have the 10 lhg here that has that side kitchen that comes in and out there but also gives you a little bit larger of an area to um, store items or use as a smaller toy hauler right mm -hmm. um and i'll touch on this because this is a, personally one of my favorite trailers to pitch this last year has been our essentials only line mm -hmm. um so essentially, obviously, there's two versions of campers out there. There's people that are going to go dry camp and get off the beaten path. And there's people that are just, hey, you know, I want to plug in and do those kind of things. So 
we felt like we were missing the mark on some of that respect. I'm um, just providing the bare bones basic because a lot of our stuff comes fully loaded. So a lot of the stuff that we pitch as standard on the beast mode models is not a standard piece of equipment for a lot of different travel trailers, right? You look at the large solar package, you look at the uh, tire pressure monitoring systems, you look at um, the suspension, some of the enclosed underbelly and cold weather stuff. That's not always standard. It could be an option or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make a travel trailer that was competitive in that market. So we kept a lot of the basics that we felt was were part of the IBEX story. You know, we always started out pitching with 15K AC. That was one of the biggest things that we pitched. A lot of the times in the segment when we first started, a lot of people were running with 13.5s. Now the market has evolved, but that was one of the staple points for IBEX, right? Um, and that's important for southern markets where it gets super warm and in the summer when it gets super warm if you've got pets, right? So that's a big, big sell point for us. Um, and then we always go into construction. So the IBEX has got the same construction across all models. It's going to be a laminated sidewall. You're going to have, you know, your aluminum frame, um, which is going to be the interior of the skeleton of the actual wall. So it will start from um, outside to in, right? So you'll have your um, fiberglass on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's like a gel coat smooth surface. So that provides an easy uh, opportunity for cleaning and maintenance and things like that. And then you've got a layer called Asdel. What that does is it provides a little bit, it's a it's an upgraded substrate compared to Lawan. Um, and we use that for all of our models. So that way it reduces the weight and helps with some moisture and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, then we go into what I kind of had to mention already, that aluminum frame and block foam. So that's going to be the insulation that you get. So the black foam that you get, as soon as that wall is laminated, it's going to be that same insulation piece for how many years you have it down the coach because it's one firm solid wall right yep, yep. Um, and then once we finish up we get on the interior portion which is our lawn panel um, we put lawn on the inside so that way we have a little bit of extra uh, tensile st strength or backing so that way when we install cabinets and things like that you're drilling into wood uh, asdell tends to get a little bit um what i want to put little i don't know put it it's not necessarily like a uh, like a backer that you want to solely rely on um, we obviously put backers throughout the wall but in, in the lamination process, um, but adding that extra barrier we feel is important to us, All right? right. I did not know that. So, and then what we also do as well is um, we keep this interiors the exact same. So there's no different color packages. There's no different, you know, different panels that you're looking at, countertops, those kind of things. So that way, when you're looking at it, it's very similar to going to, you know, a... Ford dealership. You pop up, you see that you're going to either buy the Ford XL, the Ford XLT. Maybe you're looking at like, um, I don't even know what comes after that, like Larry at King Ranch, mm -hmm. um, all those different trim packages they have. Essentially, what I'm getting at is that this would be more of an entry level piece that provides that. And then obviously, um, some of our B snow models that would classify up in that King Ranch territory. So that way you get more amenities, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's things that we kept in here, you know, like I said, the interiors, the colors like that, convection, microwave, and oven. So that way you have dual cooking source, kept the same sink, dual propane, uh, dual propane tanks, enclosed underbelly, um, a friction hinge door. So that way it doesn't slam shut on you if you have it open, those kind of things. I already kind of alluded to the gel coat and fiberglass. Yep. Still get some big bunks, right? That's a big piece in, in the 19 and 23 BHEOs. Um, big shower, and then large windows for natural light. So you'll see throughout the coach, uh, it doesn't come with a front window. So that way, they, you know, people like that, people don't like that. It depends on the customer. Um, but we still kept a good amount of windows in there for natural light. Hmm. And then still kept the power awning, PVC roof, and spare tires. So you can kind of see that profile. It looks like a regular IBEX, right? Um, but we do have it denoted as EO. So that way you know that you're kind of getting that entry-level travel trailer, right? Okay, so is the suspension the same, or is it, does it have the Kurt suspension on it too, or no? No, so these ones will have traditional axles on here, okay. um, similar to how we started out. This is kind of, I don't want to say get back to the basics, but this is kind of making camping camping, right? Yep, yep, That's yep, kind yep, of yep. the goal, right? There are some people that love this aspect. There's some people that don't like it. It just depends on the, of the customer. So you can kind of see the floor plans. Like the 19 BHO would be, you know, for a customer that might just have gotten out of tent camping, right? Mm -hmm. It has a family. This could be a perfect unit for you, right? Yep, yep. Um, or maybe 
someone wants to have a toe, they have a toe constraint. So you can kind of see it's right around 35 to 3,700 pounds. Usually I give or take a couple hundred, depending on what the offline weights are, That's but awesome. all the tags and weights are posted right there on the trailer. But it's that, it's that lightweight toe ability um, just to capture more customers. That's yeah. kind of the goal behind it. The Tacomas, the Colorado people out there, the yep. gladiators, yep. you know, I got the highest towing gladiator because I'm awesome. You know? <laughs> but, uh, Maybe because you had an idea of what you wanted to go after, yeah, right? I had a better idea with it. But, yeah, yeah. so these are – and just so everybody's clear, these are a seven-foot wide body, correct? Or seven, yes, that okay. is correct. Yeah, so they're, they're not big – pigs behind you these things are meant let me correct that so the 19 bho is a seven wide and then our 23 bho is an eight wide oh it is okay yes so i didn't i I thought most ibex were all seven foot wide so that's that's news to me well we do have we have a mixture of seven and eight wide floor plans in the in in this model year 2024 very nice okay i did not know that i mean i haven't sold an ibex for a couple years i've been out of that selling game so (laughs) Well, that's what happens. You know, a couple of years go by, we evolve and those kind of things come through. Right. So, yeah. um, that's, you know, we, we, as the year goes, as the years, you know, tack on, we kind of add floor plans that we feel like we're, you know, not capturing that customer maybe. Mm-hmm. Right. So maybe some customers, we, like you said, we start out mainly in seven wides, but some of our customers have came back, bought in and Hey, you know what, we want a bigger version of this. So yeah. we're continuing to grow that offer to grow that offering and trying to find, just the right mix of floor plans that fit for what, you know, we feel the market's got demand for. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the EO series. Um, in a nutshell, it, there's, I personally love them. I think there's tons of value in the EO. Mm-hmm. Um, you get everything from the, 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 the skull and, or the skeleton and the, the meat and potatoes of what Ibex is. And there's truly like no shortcuts in terms of, the build materials, the, the quality, there's no, it's coming down the same, the line, all the things that these people are used to building in beast mode models. And I think that's super important to kind of hammer home is because there's truly a good bang for your buck. So, I mean, depending on how people want to look at it, our RVs are definitely a discretionary income purchase, right? So yeah. some people have the necessary means for unlimited funds all the way down to, Hey, this is where I need to be. Right. Yeah. So we should not factor or um, shortcut or not have a opportunity for any of those types of, you know, conversations or budgets. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's the goal for us. Yeah. These are toys, man. They're toys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. I agree. 100%. And this is really, this is, this is obviously what everyone's been waiting for. So this is kind of uh, what we like to, I always like to start and sell up. Right. So one of my favorite pieces to talk about is the beast mode package. Um, we've talked about that for the last couple of years now. Um, this has kind of been a staple to the brand and something that we've done the tradition, uh, extraordinary amount of marketing on um, just trying to get it out there, people to talk about it. And you can kind of see some of the overviews of, you know, the, the, the coil spring sticker all the way to the packages and kind of what comes into it. So oh, nice marketing, um, but I like that. Yeah. So it's fun, right? It's mm-hmm. fun. So everyone always jokes around about Ibex having kind of that Sasquatch. So it was kind of fun to get it inside of the, uh, the, the coil spring logo. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, it, you can totally tell the suspension right there. So when we first started the brand and launched it, we had the launch package, right? So that had all the, what we call luxury amenities when we first had launched a few years back. And that consisted of like a 12 volt TV. Like I said, you'll see some things in here that we already can, that we had on some of the previous models, mm-hmm. um, 15 K AC. Uh, we include the flip five JBL speaker on this. You still, you know, you're getting the same convection microwave and oven that you had from the EOS in the beast mode models. Right. So that's kind of, there's some overarching themes and some connectivity, some li- similarities there. Um, this model, we keep all terrain tires on. So mm-hmm. similar to what you're talking about, getting off of the road, the yep. back country, those kind of things. That's what that's for. Uh, leash latch, that's on there. We have that on the little horns. Um, we still, we provide large entry steps. So those flip up steps that people are used to getting in and out, the ease, the camping, right? So maybe it's little kids, maybe it's older folks, whoever the case is, or whatever the case is, that it's just a, a luxury piece. You'll see a lot of uh, luxury amenities inside of Ibex. So it's never going to be right, necessarily the cheapest unit on the lot but it is going to have tons of value, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of the goal that we pitch is value, yep, right? Yep, yep, yep. Um, 
this one, this the B Swim models come with a front window, uh, battery disconnect. We do an enclosed underbelly and termination system, which means you, you have you can't see any of the plumbing outside of uh, outside of the enclosed underbelly, and everything shuts off at the tank. So that's good for our, our cold weather package, which is a 12 volt heated tank pad. That's and essentially, nice. what that. Go ahead. That's super nice just for travel in general. So, like, I mean, if you yeah. get a, you get a rock, I mean, you take these things off road and you get that plumbing. Something hits your plumbing. I mean, that's a problem. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that's really cool. And there's nothing wrong with having the plumbing exposed. You know, I have a camper myself. Our plumbing's exposed, right? Yeah. It's all about the necessary ground clearance and where mm-hmm. you're going, right? So, if 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 that's not an obstacle to you, that's that's perfectly fine. There's many different ways to plumb. It's 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 just our preferred method this year, right? So. For us, what we're looking at is, hey, what is our customer doing most of the time? Are they on the pavement or off the pavement? Okay, well, use by use. let's say it's both, right? <laughs> let's say it's both, right? I'll play devil's advocate here. Because yeah. it's so easy to say, hey, go off road, because it's so much more fun to pitch. But I always like taking the harder the harder pitch, right? Yep. So um, <clears throat> the enclosed underbelly and termination system provides higher ground clearance, right? So what that is beneficial for customers is, hey, Maybe you have a slanted driveway, right? Maybe you have, um, you got to back it up over a hill. Who knows, right? There's there's obstacles that every customer faces that not every, not every single one faces. So the biggest thing is providing that flexibility, um, but also trying to provide a quality cold weather package and all that kind of stuff. So that's why we do that there. Um, and I already kind of touched on it, heated tank pads, 12 volt. So this comes standard with solar. This will be you know pitched into your, this will be, wired so that way you can run off solar so let's say you're out boondocking and it gets down to 33 32 degrees at night you know you can flip that on Mm -hmm. be perfect um and you don't have to be plugged in as long as you have the good you know battery power and all that good stuff it's awesome we have the central vac system so the fun fact about ibex is there's no carpet it's all lino Mm -hmm. right so it's super easy to clean uh, super pet friendly and the back system allows you to either use the kick plate and sweep right into it so all you have to do is bring a broom or um, you can have the uh, hose kit and sweep up with it as well right so that's feature. a huge piece i love this feature i used to pitch it all the time like look at this because not My very, favorite. very few besides yeah. like motorhomes have a central vac yep. system and maybe some fifth wheels but this is really cool in a outdoorsy rugged terrain type place you know or i mean type rv so you're out yep. there and you bring in everything from your hike and then you don't want to leave it outside because it's raining. You know, yep. you can just sweep it all away. It's awesome. Or the, the smallest thing is, too, is, hey, look at these these steps. You flip them up. They're inside the coach, right? Mm-hmm. It's, you, you're not going to get all the gravel or the stone or the outdoor debris or whatever you want to label it as off. It's going to be on your floor. So instead of having to, you know, flip it open and get the vacuum perfect, I mean, you got it right there. It's, it's, it's super easy. You can sweep it in, sweep it out, whatever. It just makes it's just the ease of camping. Like I said, tons of value, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think we list, listed it twice. This says convection microwave and oven. I made this sales trainer, so that's going to be an error on my part having it in there twice. But um, that may be just a hammer home extra. But we also have RVT tracks up top. So similar to what we had up here with uh, the little horns that we talked about, some of that storage system, mm-hmm. those uh, J cradles are fastened to RVT tracks. So Instead of providing you with a J cradle or rod holder, or whatever the case is, we just put the, the 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 tracks up top and allow the customer to decide, hey, how they want to use them is where they how they want to put them. But it comes from the factory with the tracks up top for beast mode models, right? So that's going to be a huge piece, um, and it's just to cater again to the outdoor enthusiast and also provide a little extra storage, you know, opportunities. Um, and a little bit of story, right? So the benefit is that the customer doesn't have to get those installed. Is that so? That RVT track is, I mean, it's pretty customizable when you get to it. Does that make sense? Yeah, there's yeah. there's many different ways. It's it's just like a male female system that you fasten in and out of, right? Okay. So it's super um, easy. There's tons of we get it specifically from Rhino Rack, so all their storage solutions for systems will fit, or storage solutions will fit inside of that RVT track. Um, there's tons of other ways, other other. Um, like a kayak thing, you get those kayak J hooks yeah. that slip right into it, uh, or like yeah. a full on enclosed carriage up top. All those things. Yep, for sure. Sweet. Sweet. And it's, and that's what I mean. There's like I said, there's there's literally there. I say many. Sometimes I want to say hundreds. I feel like that's very overkill, hmm. but um, there's a lot of different opportunities out there that people can use to store, um, and it's pretty simple and easy to do it. 
Um, really the biggest thing is, is just getting on the roof and doing it right. So yeah. that's kind of the application of it. But I, I, I've seen people with kayaks going down the road on them before I've seen customer pages, you know, put them in there. I've even seen a couple of customers customize where they add solar panels that they can move and slide in and out of. I personally have not looked into how they did that, but it looked pretty neat from afar. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's some, there's a couple different ways that I've seen it. Um, I just truly think that it's a imagination thing and that's super important. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. And then the beast mode package is kind of what we launched. Um, and this is where this is kind of our model change for 2023, right? This was what we really pushed. Mm -hmm. um, this was where you're going to see the interior package. So this picture that you have, you have the cinder decor interior. Um, you get kind of an upgrade in terms of the changes of upholstery. Um, we had butcher block countertops, LED lighting inside that met, match the graphics, um, kind of a front wrap up here that we talk about. And then we added TST tire pressure monitor system standards in 23. So on all beast modes, you'll get a tire pressure monitor system in there. Um, and then the solar package was a huge thing for us at the time. Um, we upgraded to a 2000 watt inverter, 30 amp charge controller, 200 watt panel. So that beast mode package is what everything is consisted in there. And then we had an actual separate line item option called um, the Kurt beast mode mm -hmm. uh, independent susp suspension. So you would see that like on an MSRP, if a customer was looking at it, you could see the, the suspension line item. So it was just clear as day on there. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the biggest thing that we push for it, that, right? Um, but the beast mode package was what we launched in our 23 model year as kind of the model change. And we labeled it that, and then it just kind of, the name got the way the name got launched and the suspension, kind of, it all wrapped into one. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we, um, we, we saw it evolve into it. And that way we kind of trained on. So customers knew, Hey, that beast mode package is here. That's kind of what, you know, to expect essentially is what people were looking for. Yeah. Um, but we did make the suspension a running change in 23. So there were some model years that we produced 23s with torsion axles as opposed to um, the suspension just due to the supply constraint at the time. Um, but, you know, the units that did have it have the suspension line item on there. So that way they know that's important to note to customers, I feel. You know? Yeah. And as, so that solar panel, so they got the 200, 2000 watt uh, inverter right is that what it was 200 watt yep. panel with the 2000 watt inverter is that yeah yep so for those that yep. don't understand that basically what that inverter does is takes 12 volt power turns it into 110 am i correct yep that's what it's happens. ac yeah. to dc and dc to ac right correct. so yeah. so it helps you with that off the grid feel you can literally go off and not not have to plug in for a day or two depending on how much you right. use depending on how much you do and we can always upgrade that stuff uh whether you know whether after you buy it or at the dealership sure. so and and the benefit too you know and what i was super excited to pitch about was that it allows that the factory equipment and that beast mode package allows the customer to expand up to 600 watts of panels right so yep. the factory equipment right there all they have to do is daisy chain and just install the extra solar panels and the factory equipment that they get on that beast mode package actually allows them to get to a solar package that they can really truly boondock right yeah so sometimes customers may or may not want it they may want the suspension those kind of things so a lot of the biggest things that we that i would do and sell and train as is that you know the factory equipment is we don't we don't market it this way but the factory equipment is prepped to go to 600 watts of solar in the beast mode right yeah. so that provides tons of flexibility for customers looking for um, that dry camping, right. If they want that, but we also allow it to just be, Hey, you know, if we have a 12 volt refrigerator in here, you're going to get tons of charge as soon as that thing's kind of cooled down and it's going to give you tons of life on that, on that reefer. Right. Um, on hot days, I always recommend customers to maximize their battery lives, um, to have that refrigerator cold before they go and actually camp mm -hmm. because you'll deplete a lot of your energy getting it cooled down. But once that refrigerator is actually cooled down, it's, I think it's just a little under four amp hours draw on the battery, right? Wow. So that's super important to notate um, and help customers extend, you know, the life of their battery, but also provide a pleasant experience, right? You don't want your food going bad on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's awesome. So, and that's really neat. And then one thing that we launched um, for, you know, um, we did this right around. We it's always, there's always a big fall expo in September, mm -hmm. um, and we run it as a as a as a fall program, and we put it on some of the units. So a lot of the 24 model years you'll see have diamond dealer packages. 
So there's and not every single 24 model year has the diamond dealer package, but I do feel that this is pretty neat to note is that this diamond dealer package actually um, provides you with an extra 200 watt panel. So if you have a Beastmo model with a diamond dealer package, you actually get 400 watts of solar on the unit. Nice. Um, and then you also get a, because most all the units come with an exterior griddle that you can cook on, like right. a like a portable um, blackstone or whatever. Blackstone, sorry. Yep. And we actually provide a secondary cooking mechanism, so you still get the you still get the griddle, but it's also a pizza oven as well. Mm -hmm. So you get a custom pizza oven and paddle right yeah. there as well. So that gives you an extra outdoor cooking mechanism, and kind of fun little story everybody likes pizza and it's kind of a fun way to camp and cook and it comes with a stone and it's all set up and you can kind of see in the picture here of what it is so that's super nice um and then obviously i have some pictures of the suspension and stuff here and then these are all the beast mode floor planes that we offer um you can kind of see this on the forest river website if you click under ibex um you'll see we have like the 19 qbs 19 qth 19 mbh 19 rbm 19 msb and the 19 QBH. So for customers, this is really fun because this can help you too, mm -hmm. is that if it's a seven wide, typically the, the model year or the model has a 19 in it on, on these 24 model years, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to tell right away, like, hey, these 19 series are seven wide bodies. That's the easiest way to tell with just the model year or the, not the model year, but the model name or the floor mm -hmm. plan name. Um, obviously you can tell by just looking at the profile too, it's a little bit smaller. Those are the seven wide floor plans. Mm -hmm. And then our eight wides come in the 20 BHS, 20 MDS, 23 RLDS and 24 MCH. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's uh, very important to notate there. So we've, we offer a lot of floor plans in this segment. They provide these packages that I listed above. And that's the important part. There's things from lightweight, single axle couples coaches, all the way down to a tandem axle um, uh, toy hauler, right? So there's tons of tons of variety there. Yeah, all meant for the rugged off-road get away from people type people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and I also, I mean, I encourage customers that hey, maybe I'm a first-time buyer, um, maybe I have a tow constraint, and I want to have a good tow experience, right? This model is essentially one for you because there's a lot of features that I pointed out in here that are still part of many conventional campers. And you do get the luxury amenities of a, you know, off the grid, off road unit, right? But you also get this, you know, an upgraded suspension that's going to be the most competitive in this segment, right? So customers that are maybe, like I said, towing for the first time, going from point A to point B a lot. They have a family coach that they're moving around, or they just want to see the life of their coach get extended off the suspension. Um, I totally recommend that because I personally have towed them myself. Um, and going from point A to point B, I mean, you definitely feel a difference. And we get a lot of feedback from transporters that they, you know, they love the way that it tows and how it feels. So um, that's definitely a strong part of the story. That's the Kurt. Well. That's the Kurt Independent, right? Yep. For yeah. sure. So you guys used to have torsion bars, correct? Yep. Yeah. So when did you upgrade it in 24 or 23 to the? Uh, so all of our 22 models have torsions. Okay. Um, and then 2023, we had torsions. And then we went to uh, the suspension mid middle, not middle. I, I want to say the running, I don't know the exact production date or VIN off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. it was right around late September, early October. We had um, the suspension um, added to these units with beast mode. So yeah. it just depends, you know, what you're looking at. The torsion axles are super strong, right? And that was a, a huge selling feature for us as we got launched. Um, but we continue to kind of push the envelope, right? We wanted we want to provide the best in what's out there. Um, but now we do have inventory that has, you know, the Kurt suspension on it. And then the EOs come with a regular leaf spring axle, right? right. So uh, a lot, leaf spring axles have been around for a long time. There's a lot of great brands out there with leaf spring axles. Um, and we just want to provide a avenue on the Kurt to give the customer a little bit more luxury. But also in the EOs, we we try to be competitive too. Right? Absolutely, yeah. More of your entry-level Ibex. I guess. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and beast mode is going to be, um, you know, a, it's, we've spent a lot of time in marketing behind it and we feel that this package is something that we want to continue on with, um, with the suspension. And we've seen success in the EOs with, uh, the regular leaf spring axles. So 
I think there's going to be a lot of uh, cool things on the horizon for us as mm-hmm. well, you know, so that's something that I'm kind of segmenting into a little bit in the future. I know that we've got some new, some cool stuff to talk about in terms of um, the process for us, but I wanted to segue into this real quick. Um, you know, there's a lot of exciting stuff. We launched the RV Suite Series at September Open House this year. It won um, RV of the Year, and we've actually produced models for RVS 1 and 2 that are in the field now, and we start RVS 3 in June. So that'll be super exciting. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot about the whole so, suites. Yeah, those things yeah. Are, those are sweet. <laughs> yeah, I haven't put those on here per se, just because, you know, this is, I pushed the travel trailer. Um, I should probably pull that up here in a second. So when we get back to it, I can kind of get that on there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll launch our new floor plan that we have on the website right now in our 20 MRK. And I anticipate that being available in July timeframe. So those are the two new things on the horizon that people can see on the website right now. Um, and that's super exciting, right? So mm-hmm. there's tons of excitement built around that. I already see some customer leads coming in for RBS3 for quite some time. And the 20 MRK just went on a couple weeks ago on the website. So we should see, we've seen some leads come through for that already and excited to see that hit the field as well. Very nice, man. Well, this has been awesome. I mean, I learned, I learned a little bit about it today that I didn't know. Um, but for the adventurous, I want to get away from people or go to where your people are. Uh, the yep. Ibex is literally quite the Ibex. I mean, this is, they, they named it Ibex for a reason. They get out and get away from everybody, go up in the mountains with these things. Uh, the essentials only. I wouldn't take a Dexter axle all the way up in there. But with the Kurt suspension, yep. you can take these things dang near anywhere. Um, so I guess with that being said, is there anything else you want to talk about? You want to bring up the sweets at all? Yeah. Um, let me see here. Let me see. Double check that I'm still rolling. Yep. <sighs> We're good. We're golden. Still rolling. Okay. These things are awesome, people. You could buy one of these, set it on a, like a lake or anything, just leave it, park it, or take it with so you. This, yep. So this, I'm still screen sharing here a little bit. You can kind of see what the RV suite looks like. Uh-huh. Um, there's a lot of features on here that we can kind of go through um, as well. Some of the things that I like to show is kind of an, a modern upscale, you know, interior feature. Um, you'll kind of see the RV suite, luxury lavatory, luxury lounge, and master suite. Oh, yeah. You're going to see that in RVS 1 and 2. Um, there's tons of neat stuff on here in terms of, you know, the, still the same um, construction. We're going to have the uh, laminated sidewall. This will have a single slope roof, which is specific and patented to Ibex as well right now um, on the dimensions that we've got there. So that's super neat. Um, and you can kind of see the first two floor plans that we have out, right? RVS one, RVS two, that's super important. There's mm-hmm. tons of flexibility, still, um, uh, large beds, a uh, big bath in RVS one and two. Um, it comes equipped with what we got, what we call a power pro. Um, it allows you to talk to it and control your lights. It doesn't give you any motor functions, but if you do connect on the app, actually, you can control virtually almost everything like slide outs, awnings, all that kind of stuff off of your phone. So it's pretty neat. And uh, they're equipped on all the Ibexes that are out in the field right now. And then all the RVS threes will come with that same thing. And the the neat thing about RVS three is that you're going to see a loft above the bathroom. It's going to have a really big bathroom for everybody, large kitchen slide, and there's going to be a nice big Island in here. Um, the island's going to be a little bit changed. It's going to be square as opposed to the circle just because of space, just mm-hmm. to give it a little bit more clean walkway. Um, but the slide is going to have very similar sofa. Um, it's going to be kind of an L style sofa, big TV entertainment area. And then there'll be a loft up here where you can either use it as bunk mats or extra storage, depending on, you know, what you're looking for. And this one's going to be about 40 feet and it's still going to have that overhang and deck on the back. So, mm-hmm. Um, this one would be kind of perfect literally to park and leave. So it's going to be super competitive in, in that market. Um, and RVS one and two is more, more so meant to go from point A to point B, right? So those would be a little bit more smaller profile, about 7,800 pounds dry or 7,400 pounds dry for the RVS one. So lots of, lots of, uh, flexibility, but different offerings inside of the same, uh, series that we launched in September. Yeah. For a single guy like me, this is like perfect. You know, I could take it up and leave it and that's where I want to be. You know, but I don't yep. want to go too far. Can't go too far in the woods with this thing, you know? <laughs> no, for yeah. sure. This is there. I, I have, we're, we're still kind of seeing the customers get what they want. A lot of the customers I ran into it have property on Lake that they want to leave it at, Absolutely. or they have property at home and they want to leave it there or they want to take it to their home to go hunting. I mean, there's been 
there's been tons of different people. You know, the, one of the more neat ones I experienced was a customer that was buying um, to put on uh, their job site. Oh, yeah. So they were plugged in, right? So that was perfect. Uh, RVS3 is going to be truly, you know, m meant for more than, you know, just a couple at this point. This one is going to provide a couple areas of extra sleeping for kids. Um, and it gives a lot more relaxation space for more than, you know, a couple people. So that'll be really nice to kind of have that out there and have um, customers that want a little bit bigger space, but appreciate kind of the fit and finish interior feel um, and kind of just that overall story and overarching theme of the suites um, out there, which I think is super important. Absolutely. I guess one last thing that I would want to touch on. I mean, I love the suites personally. I think they're great for a lot of people. Um, but just kind of, if you would walk me through kind of like your PDI process and your warranty process, yep. and I think we'll be able to kind of wrap this thing up. Yeah. yeah. Let me see if I can get back to, uh, back here so I can see it when we finish up. Perfect. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot of, there's a few different processes that we follow, right? So I'll start with warranty. Mm -hmm. Um, for, we, you know, Forest River provides a one year to bumper bumper warranty, right? That's one thing that as soon as the units, uh, delivered to the customer, um, they get that one year to bumper bumper warranty. After that, um, we've got, you know, different components, right? So there's different warranties for your axles, different warranties for your microwaves, different warranties for your, you know, PVC roof. And all those are subject to what the supplier is. Um, you know, as a part of being a part of the process, I can tell you that, you know, we would stand behind the product, right? That's the most important thing, right? Um, I always, I, I'm only a part of things that I think that, you know, we truly do stand behind the product. And I do think that uh, we do take care of the customer. And that's something that I have, you know, faith in telling people that because it is something that we, we truly do stand behind, right? So we want to make sure um, that the product has, you know, one, a good following, right? But two, a, a good reputation inside of the market, right? Mm -hmm. And you do get that through warranty. And I'm not a huge warranty pitcher because you do, it's not a matter, obviously it's not a matter if, it's usually when. Mm -hmm. um, but the biggest thing is, is if I'm pitching my warranties a ton, you're not doing the things right on the first hand too, <laughs> right? So that's another thing. Like, yeah. I don't want, I don't, and I'm not saying that in a negative way. Yeah. I just, we do have warranties there for that exact reason, right? But there's some things that we do prior to the process. And some of those things, like we talked about, you know, like the construction materials, those kind of things, those are well thought out amongst the team um, prior to even launching. And just, you know, we don't just launch something and then rip out a hundred in three days after that. Like it's, yeah. it's a, it's a big process. There's multiple processes that we have to go through um, just to get to where we're at, where a customer can actually see the floor plan on the, on the lot. But uh, we do have PDI process, right? So anything that we build new does have to go through PDI to get cleared, right? So there's always secondary inspections that way. Um, and then once it's cleared, you know, it's not like that's just the only time it gets PDI, right? So we have a certain quota that we have to hit, um, you know, in getting units to our PDI facility so they can check them out. And then when we see the reports come back, it's 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 cut and dry of what, what, what needs fixed or what we had deviations of or whatever the case is. Um, and it, it gives you a certain amount of what, you know, the warranty dollars are and the goal and where you need to be and those kind of things and those thresholds. So we're always paying attention to that. That's another process. But one thing that, you know, IBEX does at the divisional levels, we do have, um, a CAEI, um, group, which is a secondary kind of inspection team. Um, we have corporate quality controllers that are out with the teams, uh, going through, working online, hey, this is not right, or hey, you know, just whatever we're working through those obstacles. Mm -hmm. um, we do have people that come in and out and check that. And then we also have, you know, the bay where they have a certain amount that they have to pull in and look at. And we do try to get um, stuff from every run that we do. So that way we're getting good feedback and catching that stuff. And then there's, um, well, you know, quality inspectors on the line and those kind of things. So it is important to us. And, you know, a, a quality product will stand and sell on its own. And that's kind of a big thing. Um, and that's one of my favorite parts of it, of being part of it is because I used to say this as an operations manager before I became in the RV industry was it's never a destination. It's a journey, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you're always going to have something pop up. It's never going to be, Hey, we're here. We're done. We're good. Right. It's always going to be what's next. What can we work on? What are we doing? So those are questions that we're always asking. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> after sales and customer service, you know, um, if we, we partner with specific dealer partners, one being Bish, right? So that way customers can have the best experience possible. Um, and we try to leverage the customer to work through their dealerships that they purchase through. So that way they can experience the best customer service. And we try to service our dealerships as fast and in and, and a oriented and timely manner to make sure that they're taking care of the customer. So that's kind of the big piece there. 
Um, and I know that you hit me with one piece on some R and D mm -hmm. there's always research, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, my job is really unique now is because, you know, I get to spend time selling, training, working with dealerships, but, um, get to work with suppliers and the latest products that are coming out. Um, maybe hitting some marks and demands that, you know, we haven't seen or floor plans that we need to kind of come up with that are unique and specific to us or whatever the case is. So, um, you know, a constant, it's, it's a constant battle here. I'm always researching. I'm always looking at stuff. I'm always talking to, um, different suppliers and different vendors that, uh, help us, right? So just as much as the dealer relies on us as a manufacturer, we rely on our vendors as much to uh, help us kind of push forward and continue to create and uh, produce innovative and new and uh, cutting edge product, right? That's kind of the goal. Yeah. Man, when you walk onto a lot and you walk into an Ibex, you're going to notice a difference. There's they're solid, man. They're just a solid little unit. They got literally everything you want in a seven foot box and 20 foot, 20, 20 foot long. Like, my, the one I want's seven or six foot wide. What is the LHG six foot wide, or seven? Uh, it's seven foot wide. Seven foot wide and ten foot long. I don't need any more than that. But that's my style, right? I, I want to yeah. get away from people, put it on my Jeep, and get gone. Put two dirt bikes in it and see you later. Um, but awesome little trailers. I love it. And uh, Thomas, thank you very much for being on for us. And uh, we, uh, this is everything you need to know about an Ibex. I mean, I, I don't know what else. I, did we miss anything? No, I mean, I'm sure I missed something, right? There's, yeah. there, I'm sure there's something that I didn't pitch up to spec, right? There's a lot of stuff inside of the Ibex. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is relying on the dealerships, you know, obviously to continue to work with the sales staffs, right? Those are something we work on as a sales team every day. We, we pop out and see different dealerships that represent us. We're divided up amongst territories and have different responsibilities. It's not just me. If there's a team of... Uh, five guys that you know are the face of the product to the dealership level and then there's a team behind us that supports us so um it's a multi-layered piece and i oftentimes you know it's it's not i it's we right so there's different angles and those kind of things and um i think having a big team aspect helps kind of with the success and kind of the growth of the product all right well i think that's it bud yeah i appreciate you having me on today it was fun Absolutely, buddy. You don't have to leave here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off here real quick. Yep, All right, no guys. Problem. This is everything you need to know about a Forest River Ibex. Stay tuned for more from the RV Voice. <laughs>